This episode is sponsored by Honey Badger. Are you looking to enhance clarity in production without a PhD in observability? Try Honey Badger Insights. Honey Badger Insights is built around structured events and Honey Badger's new query language Badger QL, which allows you to analyze data, create metrics, and design custom dashboards. All of this is available for free with Honey Badger's monitoring suite, which includes error tracking, uptime monitoring, and more. Explore your data in new ways with Badger QL. It's pretty cool and simple. So give it a try today at honeybadger.io. That's honeybadger.io. In this episode, we're going to have a look at a list of posts. And when we come to the post index, you'll see that we are immediately taken to one of the posts but it's not actually that particular post. It's the index of all of the posts. So we have all of these posts here, and that's not in a very presentable format. So I've just restarted the server with my prepared code, and we'll come back and have a look at it. So when we come to the post, you'll see that we got that blurred out image, and we also had some spacer fillers that made it look a lot nicer. So if we scroll down, we can see it again. And on the network tab, I'm going to change it to a slow 3G. So we can see what this looks like a bit better. So we'll come back to the home page. You'll see it's taken a lot longer to load. But then when we come back to the posts, we'll see that it has given us that blurred out image, and then the image loads in. This isn't a perfect solution, but I do think it gives a much better experience. So by not being a perfect solution, if I disable the throttling, and if I come back up to the top and refresh, You'll see that it doesn't immediately load and some of the blurred out images are disappearing. And so that's not a great experience. Navigating away from the page and navigating back, you do get that nice experience of the skeleton. And that's what we're going to be looking at in this episode. And as a side note for these episodes, I have started using import maps and tailwind. However, you can still accomplish this if you're using Bootstrap or something else. I'm still not completely sold on tailwind. However, what I do like is not having to write any custom CSS. And so to start off, I do have a post scaffold and Tailwind already installed through the Rails new app generator. And so we're basically going to pick up right where we have our posts with some already seated in. So the first thing that we need to do is to move this over into a card format. And there's a couple of ways we can do that. So we'll first just load it in which means we do need to come into the index view of the posts. So right here, we're looping over all of the posts and we're just rendering the post partial. We have a min full width and we want to change this to a grid layout. So I'm going to do a default grid columns of one. If it's a small screen, then we can do a grid columns of two. And on a larger screen, we'll do a grid columns of four. And let's add a gap between the columns of five. We're still going to loop through each one of the posts, but then we're going to have a div and we'll set some more classes of a max width of small. I want to add a background of white and we'll add a border and we'll make this border gray with a 200 and we'll make the corners rounded and add a shadow. We're still going to be rendering out our posts and so that looks good for now. So let's go ahead and see what this looks like. So this looks a lot better. We have our four columns. We are also showing the entire blog post. Now, I don't want to go through and edit the partial because this could be useful for other things, but I am going to just take the entire partial and then we're just going to paste it in here, knowing that we're going to have to refactor this in a bit. So for our post content, we can call to plain text on here because it is action text, and then we can truncate it. And let's truncate it to 256 characters and the emission we'll just add the ellipses, which is just three dots. So doing that change, we can come back and refresh, and that looks a lot better. And let's go ahead and move our title below the image. We'll save this, refresh, and that looks a lot better. If we navigate away and come back, it loads, and that's pretty nice. On the image, we do need to add some class to it, and let's add the rounded dash T for top, and we want to make this large. So that's going to give us that nice rounded edge on the top. Our text is a little bit big for the title, 
so we can make that a 2XL. And the link for show this post isn't bad, but I do want to make it a little bit nicer. So I'm not going to be able to type in all of these classes, but it is just a tailwind button. And we're going to make this link to a block. And then we can say that we want to read more. And then let's add in an SVG. And so this SVG is just an arrow icon. We'll say this and have a look. And that looks a lot better. And we do need to put a bit of padding around the card. So let's just add a div with a class. And we'll just add a padding 5. And notice I'm not wrapping the image in here because I don't want the image to be padded, just our text. And so with that change saved, that's looking a lot better. Maybe I did go a bit too much with the padding. So we can do a padding at 3. Oh, and of course, we do want to pull up our button into there as well. But we can save this, come back, and that looks a lot better. And this could work, especially if we had only a few posts. However, for someone who doesn't have a fast internet, this may not be the best experience. And so one thing that we can do is to convert this over into a turbo frame tag. And so basically, this entire card, we're going to move into a turbo frame tag. And we're going to call it our DOM ID for the post. And let's add some more description. And we'll just call this the card. We can add a source so that it's then going to make a request back to our Rails application. And for the routes on this, let's make it the post card path. And then we'll pass in the post. We can generate a controller around this. And let's namespace it under the posts. And it'll be our card with a show action. This will almost do what we want in the routes, but I do want to go into the routes to modify this because right now it's a little bit messy. So instead of having our namespace there, I'm going to create a block under the posts. And within this block, we'll have a resource for the cards. And I only want the show action and I want the module to be under the posts. And I am actually going to delete and regenerate this because I do want that controller to be plural. So I'll regenerate it with the post forward slash cards. And then I'll clean up the routes again. So if I did a Rails routes dash G for the card, we should be able to see what our path is. And it is for the post cards. So in the index, I do need to make sure that our source path does match what we have set up in the routes. This post cards controller is pretty simple, where we're just going to find our post. We're going to set that equal to our post.find. And we want to find it by the params and the post underscore ID because that's what's getting passed in in the URI pattern. This also created a show action. And in the show action, I'm going to paste what we had for the card, except we will need a turbo frame tag within there just so it will get replaced. So we can have our turbo frame tag and we can also fix our indentations, but make sure that you also get rid of the source because you're not going to need that now, and it would actually throw an error. And now this turbo frame tag will be a block. And one other thing that we have to do is all of our references to the local variable post, we're going to have to make an instance variable because now that's getting loaded from the postcards controller. So we can go through and make all of those instance variables. And now when we come back, you'll see that they're loading in, and that's good. However, this doesn't really give a great experience especially for someone with a slower connection, because these images can be quite large. We can see the images, and they're not horribly large. They are a couple hundred kilobytes. However, that's large enough on a slow connection where that could be a bit problematic. So right now, when we're showing the poster, we're not doing any variants. So what I would like to do when we are loading the blog post is to have a variant, and we'll just make this a thumbnail which means we can come into our post.rb and where we have that one attached for the poster, we can create a block. I'll do a blob and then we can call a blob.variant and we need to call it thumb and we want to do a resize and pad and this is going to be an array. So the width will be 350 pixels by 185 pixels, which is the size that we have about on our cards. We could even call a saver and then pass in a quality. You want to be sure with this because too low of a number, like a 10, if we were to save this and refresh, you'll see that it's very grainy and pixelated. So this is a percentage where you could do a 50, and that's going to be a lot better. But the 50% 
if we were to inspect, that's a much more respectable 13 kilobytes now. But we could get this even lower on the initial load if we were to have a different variant, if we did a loader, where we want to make this extremely small. So we can't really do a 18.5, so I'm going to change this to a 19. We'll keep the quality at 50, but then we could also, because we are using the VIPS library, we can add a blur on it, and I'll just do a blur of one, and then for our thumbnail, we'll just retain the original quality. So now the loader isn't being used yet, but we do have some high quality images, and those are back up to 128 kilobytes. So that saver makes a huge difference in the file size. But if we were to use the loader variant, you'll see that it's really small, which isn't a problem because we could just add a class on our image tag before we just had that rounded. But if we call the inset of zero, we want the width to be full, the height to be full. Let's say that and see what it gives us. So now we have a much nicer blurred image, but that's not gonna be good if we never then load in the original image. And that's where we can do a skeleton frame. So instead of doing our loader here, we still want to do our thumb, but I'm going to make a copy of this image tag and we're gonna go back into our index action where we are calling the original turbo frame tag. We can create a block on here and basically everything within this block is going to get replaced. So if I were to load in this variant and actually I basically wanna copy everything within this turbo frame tag and we'll just copy it into here. But the idea here is we're not wanting to load the actual text. It's going to get replaced. So where we had our post name, I'm just gonna put some dashes for now for our content. I'm also gonna put some dashes and I'm just going to delete that link to read more. We can make this even more simple by just getting rid of the different things that we don't need. And then we need to make this instance variable a local variable, and then we can add in the loader. So when you come to the page, it doesn't really look great yet, but it is making progress. So if we navigate away, and if we set our connection to a slow connection, you'll see that it's much more presentable, and then our content loads in. But on the index action, I don't like the dashes, so I do want to make that a little bit different. I'm going to make the title a horizontal rule with a class, and I basically want to give it some nice margin. We'll make it a darker color, and we'll add a border, and we'll make the border thicker. We can do something very similar for the content section, but we're going to make four or five different ones, and we want to make this a much lighter shade of gray. So we'll just do a 200. So now if we save it, if we navigate away, if we navigate away and then back to our posts, that looks a lot nicer. And then it will load in as we would expect. And so the whole idea of this isn't necessarily to add more complexity, but instead of just having some kind of loader, like a little spinner, I do like giving some kind of skeleton shape while some content is loading. This kind of page may not be the best example because you could be making a lot of requests back to your application. However, think of this like a dashboard, where if you have several things on your dashboard, you could load in a skeleton of what a particular widget would look like and then render out the full content. Sometimes the dashboard, depending on the application, could take much longer to load in its contents because it may be doing a lot more calculations. But regardless, this is still a neat trick. And again, even though these are Tailwind classes, you should be able to do something very similar with Bootstrap or some custom CSS. Well, that's all for this episode. Thanks for watching. For more videos, check out driftandruby.com.